Now, whether you call this own or on, it is this, the X1S, their fifth revision DAC amp combo. Now, as you see here, I've got the Schitzmere, whatever you want to call it, the SMSL Sanskrit with the Fio, and then there's this. Now, this is an all-in-one, so DAC and headphone amp. Uh, it runs roughly the same price as these, it's 250 this is about, get the Uber, it's 250 and these two together would be about 220 So, what's so special about this? Well, DSD capable, just like the Sanskrit, again, Ship Mahdi is not DSD capable. Not a huge deal, not super interested in that, but has all the bells and whistles that we're looking for. Coaxial in, optical in, USB in, just like these two. Coaxial out, a left and right audio in, and a left and right audio out. So you could access the DAC in this, and you could feed it an analog signal from another device. All well and good. Here's the power brick, and it is legitimately a brick, because it's, it's just, I do not like the cords on this. They're both too short. Either one's too short or they're both too short. Because if you put this giant brick on the floor, this is the sort of room you've got to maneuver this on your desk. And if you put this giant brick on your desk, you've got that much space to find a plug. And then you have a brick on your desk. So if this was six feet long, you'd be set. You could leave this on the floor. You may have to do a little bit of playing around. Now let me unplug the shit stack. Come here, shit stack. And plug this in. Luckily, I have a massive extension cord, so none of these problems apply to me. Good. Now, this is a proprietary plug because this is a proprietary power supply. It's a plus and minus push-pull 12 volt, which is beneficial. When it comes to audio, you want to give a positive and negative value. I don't understand the electrical engineering benefits of it. I'm sure someone could go in my comments right now and do that, though. Plug in. Big power switch right here. That, that's, that's, that's it. Um, now, where's my USB? It's plugged into the Mahdi still. I did have an issue with this beast in hubs it did not like hubs it wants a direct line of sight to the motherboard which is what this long ass usb is accomplishing requires a driver download it came with a little usb stick a little tiny one like a flat one it was great i don't know where it is or right, i'd show it to you it's somewhere somewhere in the world is that usb stick but I don't have it right now. It comes with this adapter to go to quarter inch because all devices should have a quarter inch. Emotiva looking at you just for longevity of the plug in the device. Now, so you turn it on. We've got it plugged in. All the lights turn amber for a second. Now that one's green. Now that one's on. Now it should just be set because I've already installed the drivers on my computer here. Playback devices, speakers, Exmos properties. I could rename that. That's why I can't get a mechanical keyboard. I constantly throw it on the floor. Uh, now, Un X1S little s 32 bit. We change the icon. Don't bother. Levels 100. Enhancements. Disable all enhancements. I will say this every time I review a DAC. Having these unchecked is not the same as disabling all enhancements. I don't know why, but Windows, at least Windows 8, does shit to it. Look at those. You got everywhere from 1644 to 32192. So that's crazy high. Apply, apply, apply. I'm not going to set it to the default because we're just going to go on Fubar now anyway. Now, the build of this. It is a giant piece of aluminum and I like the shape. It's got a slightly curved top, it's hard to tell, but there's a slight bump there, which doesn't really hinder putting things on top of it. If you wanted to put something with rubber feet on it, 
it's still gonna work. It's just a design feature. Uh, there's little slots in the side. And if you want to, if your desk is sort of crowded, like this one currently is at the moment, you can run this like that. It will sit perfectly on its side and give you access to the volume here and plug here and power and switch there. So that that is a, is a possibility you're not being a hacky bastard if you do that. I've run the outputs of this because it has outputs from the DAC into my E9K and compared the headphone amplifiers. And I think this one has a slight advantage. I don't know what that advantage is. I'm not going to attempt to put it into some audiophile wording where, oh, the, the pleasure of the, the highs really melded with the mid-ranges uh, speed. And no, none of that. You just, I just, I'm a very simple reviewer. It's, I now have these two. Probably like this better. Now, this is a much simpler unit. I mean, it has a USB in, but that's only if you use this. So this is just a plain old dumb... Yes, plain old dumb headphone amp. Just like this is a plain old dumb headphone amp. This has got a, this is You're getting this because it's all in one. Good. If you need it all in one, if two things and connecting them together is not your style, these three setups cost the same amount of money. This one's benefit is it's made in America. This one's benefit is it is separate and you could change this out for a bigger amp in the future or change this out for something you know, with more features, although how much more than DSD support do you want? And a big black box. But the build quality of this is pretty stellar. It looks, it looks better than having even this here or this here. This looks better. Now, so the DAC in it is really high quality. The headphone amplifier in it is possibly the best I've heard. I mean, again, I, I'm, I, it's just, I have human ears. I don't have an oscilloscope here to test these things. But they all list their numbers. They all list what they can do. And this seems to have... Oh, God, it's going to be loud. I'm going to change this for a second. Nope. This seems to have a slight advantage in sound quality. I think that's where I was saying. Uh, DSD capability. This has it. This has it. This doesn't have it. I don't care. I really don't care. Until, until I have a reason to care about DST, I'm just going to sort of like shrug it off like smart TV features that five years ago I didn't need because I had a computer hooked up to my television. And now if I want to just watch something on Amazon, it's pretty convenient to be like, blah, blah, blah. So, or cast from my phone straight to that. Oh, did you see this video? Boom, and it's on there. So eventually in the future, I might give a shit about DST, but right now I do not. What I give a shit about is this headphone amp and music. See, that's the, that's the big problem with people. And you people watching, you, this is your problem too. Is you're all here watching said review going, oh, I need that jack. But why? Why do you need it? To power your headphones because your headphones are so... But why? It's music. Am I wrong? Or do you people just sit there and then rub your equipment down? Because I know... When I went to the Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, 80% of the people there presenting don't give a fuck about music. They're just there to rub things. Oh, look at the, look at the numbers and the spec sheet. And this is $40,000, this DAC. I touched a $40,000 DAC. Was not impressed. Chris Cornell's songbook is an album everyone that's watching this needs to go now and, and, and purchase. Of course, I found it, and it is... It mind-blowingly good is how I'm going to describe it. Every track but Black Hole Sun. I love Like a Stone. I discovered it on Tidal on my phone, and I just I had to obsess over it for a while. It deserves a spot in this review. This is the headphone amp DAC combo that I pulled out to listen to the Chris Cornell songbook from 2011. It just is. Because whatever little bit little tiny bit better than it has than whatever than my 
Fio can produce, I wanted to take advantage. All three of these are good. You're never gonna come into our audio file or our headphones and be like, I got the shit stack, that's garbage, don't do that. Or I got the Sanskrit Fio combo, that's crap. Although some people seem to think that I shouldn't be powering thousand dollar headphones with that. And they're full of crap, because it works just fine. But now I've got this, and now this, here's the thing, there's no high-low gain on this. And really, they're not, it's not a super powerful headphone amp. It's only 80 milliwatts at 300 ohm, which is what I'm gonna run my Mad Dogs on right now in three seconds. Let me set this up to output. This uses an ASIO driver. That little USB key comes with a ton of stuff to install. And it uses the Exmos USB ASIO driver, which I'm gonna pick right now. Apply, okay, play. Yes, Chris Cornell is now playing. Um, like I said, it does not like hubs. I had to have a hub down there with my keyboard, mouse, and all this stuff is plugged into. And if I plug this into it, I was getting crazy loud static. And it might just be my setup because my setup's got a lot of quirks. But uh, if you're gonna use it, try to use it uh, direct to the motherboard. It also came with a USB cable, which I don't have here to show you, but it was a really nice one. So, half gain is powering my Mad Dogs to listenable volume. Full volume is damaging, but I still don't think this has the power to reasonably push 600 ohm headphones. If you've got really, really hard drive headphones, this may not be the amp, the DAC amp. But then again, I don't have any in the test with. So if you're in the comments, if you own one of these or you're gonna own one of these, you, you have owned one in the past, or if you're owning themselves, please say whether 600 ohm headphones will work on this. Because if they do, then this plays 100% of the headphones you'd ever really need to buy. Anything beyond 600 ohm or something that's retarded like the uh, Abyss, you're spending four or five grand on headphones, you're not buying a $250 DAC amp combo. But these are the three DAC amp combos that you can consider. This is just the prettiest of them. And again, I don't, I don't like the stack as a stack. Oh God. There, there's a stack for you people who are hardcore. And remember, remember people, this is all just for music, all right? Because you love music. Don't, don't do this for hardware. If you're gonna get one for looks, this is probably the one you're gonna get for looks. Stand it up on end, stand it up this way. Oh God, glass surface. Slippy, slippy glass surface. This also comes in silver, by the way, which uh, if you have nothing but black stuff in your desk, get it in silver because I like a bit of a standout. The things I've done for all that I did. Uh, I can't sing like Chris Cornell. It's unfortunate. I wouldn't be doing audio reviews if I could sing like Chris Cornell. I would just be recording myself and playing it back. So, yeah. Enter another option in the $250 I have to spend on Dagon. It is very heavy, too. Like, holy crap. Definitely... Well, the, sh the shit stuff is pretty light, actually. This is some light shit. This is a little bit heavier, this shit. But this is two cases, and this is one case. So you got optical, you got coaxial. So you can run game consoles, you can run the Chromecast into this. Audio out to an, a, a desk amp, SMSL, SA, SA60 or something. It's a good solution. This is a good all-in-one solution to consider. These are pretty much the only three sub $300 solutions you need to concern yourself with. You're either getting the black stack of mixed components or the shit stack or now the X1S. And that's it.